And, of course, the main event was the uh, Blackpool Combat Club against the Elite in the Anarchy in the Arena match. And uh, we've said it before, if there's one thing that you can say about AEW, that is that when they do a stipulation match, they deliver. This was anarchy, this match here. Oh, yeah, everything going on. Absolutely, completely insane. So Violent Idols came out, and they started to sing Wild Thing. Now, last year, they played Wild Thing, and they played it, I believe, twice. And then, I think it was, was it Jericho that uh, put a stop to the music? What did they do last year? Somebody put a stop to the music last year. Yeah. And the fans were furious when it happened. Yeah. So, this year, I, I would presume that what happened is they just said, have the guy keep going, and when you think it's time, go super kick the guy. Because they made it over three times through that song. I think they were on the fourth time through when the Young Bucks finally super kicked these guys. And it was it was so much better this way because they went through the song once, and I mean, this crowd, you know, it was it was a harder than usual AEW crowd. But man, they, not for this match. They played that music and they started fighting and these fans were so into this. And then they go through the song one time and then as soon as they start over again, you hear this giant pop. They keep brawling. They're doing dives to the music. They're just going crazy. They get to the end of the song. They start the song a third time. There's another huge pop. So they went through about four times before I guess it was it the Young Bucks that super kicked the band. Is that what happened? Um, I don't know how many, but it was Young Bucks super kicked only the only the lead singer. Okay, because I, I couldn't see from where I was. Yeah, at, yeah he but. super kicked the lead. So, singer. but but you know, by the time it, it was like, at first I thought just played the song through the entire match. But it did get to that point where I thought, okay, you know what? We've heard the song enough. Yeah. And that was like right when they super kicked the guy. So they timed it perfectly because they they then kept the crowd did not boo and they kept the crowd throughout the entire rest of the match. And I mean, every they they brawled in the crowd, they brawled at ringside, they brawled to the outside. Uh, didn't they? Did, wasn't Claudio? He did the giant swing in the. Uh, he did giant swing on I believe it was, it was Nick. A, Nick. I think it was on the, Matt. And then he he giant did the giant swing in, and in, into, the, into the garbage, the garbage can. can. Yep. Yeah. And then with Matt and he did the pile driver in the bed of they went outside the yeah again in the bed of the truck. And he did the pile driver in the bed of the truck because that that kept Matt out of action for most of the match or at or, least or a portion se- se- of several, the match for several minutes. Yeah. And I, um, Nick was out too because for a while there it was it was just Paige and um, Omega working together with the idea of Paige and Omega kind of were the ones that didn't trust each other but they they had each other's back and everything like that and then. Um, the numbers were catching up on them until... Uh, uh, Callus is out at ringside, by the way, doing commentary, which was a foreshadowing for the thing. Right. So finally, they ended up getting uh, Nick in like a, a double submission, and that's when Matt ends up limping his way down to ringside so he can make a big comeback. And, uh, you know, Moxley's bleeding all over the place, and Nick Jackson's bleeding all over the place, and finally Moxley ends up getting a... Uh, well, first Moxley poured some thumbtacks out. Matt comes back to the ring and he hits a super kick and he's got like a, a firecracker or something in his boot. And so he hits a super kick and th- there's like this giant explosion out of his foot. And the crowd was just, they went crazy for that. And then, of course, the heels take him out and they tear his boot off and they tear his sock off and they tear the firework thing out of it so he can't use it. And then he ends up getting lifted for the atomic drop and he's dropped foot first into the tacks. And he's got these tacks coming out of the bottom of his foot and coming out of his heel. Mm. And so he's limping around. And then, you know, everyone's doing all their big spots there at the end. And then uh, finally, uh, Paige hits Danielson with the dead eye. Omega hits a one-winged angel. Yuta runs in to make the save. Omega and and Paige are hitting Yuta with move after move. And then finally, Don Callis throws in a screwdriver for Yuta. He hits Cowboy. Callis, and he is about to uh, go after Omega when Omega turns around, and he's going to kill Callis. But then a dude slides into the ring. He's got a mask on. He uh, lays out Omega with the big knee. He takes off the uh, hood, and it is Takeshita, who has turned heel and joined Don Callis. And then Yuta ends up getting another screwdriver shot. He puts the seatbelt on Omega. And Wheeler Yuta pins Kenny Omega 
Yeah. In the main event of Anarchy in the Arena. And then, of course, the heels are beating down everybody afterwards. And uh, when the show went off the air, Kenny Omega did do a promo. And he apologized to the fans for what had happened. And he essentially said that, you know, these AEW shows, they, they're supposed to be celebrations. They're supposed to have happy endings. But, man, that didn't happen tonight. And he says, don't give up on us, which got a big pop. And then he said, you know, we were outnumbered here tonight. But uh, I might know a couple of guys. And he he, 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 said, he flat out said outside of AEW yeah. that will help even the odds. Everybody so, assumed it was Kota Ibushi. Everybody assumed uh, Okada and Kota Ibushi. Yeah. Which, if you, if you look at the last uh, New Japan show with Okada and Moxley, I mean, that would make sense that Okada would be one of the guys and uh, Kota Ibushi would be the other guy. So, yeah. I mean, this match was fantastic. It was completely insane. It was, as promised, a bloodbath. And, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was good enough that, like, you know, up until that point, it was like, you know, this is a really good AEW show. But this last match made this seem like the last two. an awesome show. The last two. The, yeah. The, 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 the four-way. I mean, the four-way was super spectacular. It was like watching, um, with the exception of Max, um, because Max. But, you know, again, like that's, you know, it, 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 it reminded me of watching one of the, you know, like a AAA uh, match, you know, where you just have all these high flying moves, and it's, um, you know, and then Max was there to uh, not do the high flying moves, um, but uh, yeah, it just Sammy was just doing all kinds of crazy things. I mean, the one thing that I got to say watching the show though is that um, you know compared to WWE is like there's a lot of risk taking here. I mean, you know, just. Um, and and that's what I mean. It is what they've trained the crowd to want, but it's there's some you know like so many dives and so much craziness and um, but you know in this in that four way I mean there was a lot of spots that that um, you know was just um, man it's, it's it's especially with Sammy just a lot of a lot of really big spots but man his timing was great um, you know he did some stuff like. Out of nowhere, the crowd loved it. You know, I mean, um, um, you know, the crowd, lo you know, the crowd loved the last two matches. Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour, talking professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on this program. What kind of mustache did Vince McMahon have? Well, goddamn! <laughs> you had questions about my mustache. You just had to ask. My God, Vince, is that you? Hell yeah, it's me. What are you doing in my chair, kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah listen, I'm here, everybody, for a moment. You are. Because I know the only thing that anybody cares about is this stupid mustache story. I get a text. He's back, LOL. First, I was told he was snuck into the building. I started getting messages. Dude, he's got a mustache. You ever seen uh, uh, Gomez Adams from the Adams Family? That's what his mustache looked like. And he also had jet black hair. <laughs> I got a sale to facilitate, so I'm out of here. Shave that thing. Oh my God. Wrestling Observer Live. I went to Rite Aid. Oh, no. And uh, they had, uh, I don't know, that. I think it was by L'Oreal or something like just, that. Just for men. This right. is apparently not to be used to color all of your hair black. Uh-huh. So I got home, and I just... I start running the water through my hair, and, like, I can't even get my fingers through my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I washed my hair like seven, eight times. Until it fell out? Finally, I was like, dude, I got to cut my hair off. This stuff is not coming out. <laughs> I thought I was so clever making fun of him and spoofing his mustache and dyeing my hair black and going in there looking like Vincent Price. And what happens in the end? I end up having to shave my head because of this guy. I think Vince watches this show every week. He goes into the archives. He watches the Retro Raw. He follows along with us. Okay. And he was watching this show, and he saw old Burt Reynolds. Man, he saw Ron and Sheer marking out for this guy, and he was like, that's the secret of mustache. And he went out and got a blonde with big boobs. I don't know about that one. Oh. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.